Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Planetarium show. And I apologize, my eye is suddenly started bothering me as soon as we went live. Um, so, welcome to uh, our first official show in July, even though on Wednesday we did our What's Up for July. Um, and so tonight we're going to be taking you through the stars and constellations that you can find up in the July nighttime sky. Um, so as always, if you have any questions throughout our show tonight, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Um, our voice in the sky here, who I completely forgot to let say hi because my eyes started bugging me, um, go ahead and say hi. Hi, I'm, you know, I'm a physics and astronomy undergrad at UMD. Um, so he's going to be keeping an eye on the comments for me and will let me know as questions come up. Um, all right. So for our show tonight, we are using this program called Stellarium, which is probably familiar to any of you that have been to any of our monthly uh, live stream star shows. But it's this really cool program that lets you basically put in a date, time, and location, and it shows you what the sky looks like. Uh, so I have it set up for Duluth, since that's where the planetarium is located. Um, although the skies that I will show you tonight, even though it's set for Duluth, are going to be very similar for pretty much anyone in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then things will look quite a bit different. Um, but this program is free to use, so you can always download it and put in your own location and see exactly what has changed. All right. So um, not only do we have it set for Duluth, we have this set for right now. And since we are in the middle of summer, uh, at this time of night, the sun is still up, which we can see there uh, just over the western sky. Uh, so what I'm going to need to do is actually fast forward time just a little bit until the sun starts to set, uh, which it'll do setting over there in the west. And I'm going to let it go until we get pretty dark. So we'll stop right about there. That's about 10.30 tonight. Um, the sun has set well below the horizon. We're getting some really dark skies. And so now we can really start to see what's up this month. And I'm just gonna go ahead and close out of our date and time window here. All right. So to start our tour of what we can see up in July, uh, we're going to start in the north. And the uh, objects that we can find in the north, um, if you've been to any of our constellation shows, either here online or in the planetarium, um, you will hear a lot of the same or familiar objects. And it's because these things that are up in the north are up all year round. And so for anyone who is new to the night sky or new to trying to learn how to find stars and constellations, the north is a great place to start because they will always be there, those same stars and objects. Um, but we'll also teach you some tricks on how to use these objects in the north to then find other things elsewhere in the sky. So to get started, we're actually going to look more to the northwest where we see this group of seven stars here. Uh, this group of seven stars is probably one of the most uh, famous objects uh, in the stars in our night sky. And this is our Big Dipper, where we have the handle and the cup of the Big Dipper. Now, I have to tell you, the Big Dipper is actually not a constellation. It's an asterism. It's a smaller grouping of stars within a larger constellation. So these seven stars are actually the seven brightest stars in the Greek constellation of Ursa Major, or the Big Bear. And so to turn this into a bear, we're going to have to add in some more stars. Um, our handle here is actually the tail of the bear. Here's the back, ear, nose, chest, front legs, belly, and back legs. And so that is our big bear. Bear. And the bear kind of looks like it's diving down into the horizon this time of year. Now, the reason we call this the big bear is because we do have another bear over in this part of the sky. This one's a bit smaller, so it's the little bear, or some minor. And to find it, we're actually going to use the front two stars of the Big Dipper to help us. These are called the pointer stars because if you connect them in a line, 
and follow that line, it'll take you to this bright star here, which is Polaris, also known as the North Star. And this is the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. And so here we have the handle and then the cup of our Little Dipper. You may notice that it is much harder to see with only three bright stars, the other four being quite dim. Um, and this does tend to give people troubles. They, they go out looking, trying to find the Little Dipper and can't find it. Um, but it's actually not your fault. Unless you're in truly, truly dark skies, you probably won't see all of the stars of the Little Dipper. Um, now, our Little Dipper is also our Little Bear. And so again, the handle is our tail. And then the little cup of the Little Dipper is the little bear body, where we have kind of the head, front legs, body, and back legs. And so there is our little bear. Um, so yeah, those are our two bears up in the northern sky. Um, now, just because they were bears to the Greeks doesn't mean that all cultures saw bears up here in this part of the sky. Um, and in fact, there's lots of interesting things uh, seen up here. Um, for the Norse, they saw, instead of all of these stars, um, see, there we go, uh, they saw what we call the dippers as the wagons. And so the Big Dipper was kind of the man's wagon, either uh, Thor or Odin. And then the Little Dipper was the woman's wagon, which is usually Freya. Um, we also see um, other cultures do see some animals here. So the Ojibwe see a fisher where the Greeks saw a big bear, which makes a little bit more sense because the fisher does actually have a long tail. Um, and then the Little Dipper they saw as a loon named Monk. So lots of different fun things to see uh, out of these same sets of stars, just depending on what culture you're talking to. All right, um, so let's find a few other constellations that are up in the north. Um, and for our next one, we're actually going to use those pointer stars again. But this time, instead of stopping at Polaris, we're actually going to follow these pointer stars past Polaris, past Polaris to this big W we have in the sky. This W to the Greeks is the Queen Cassiopeia. And this one does require a little bit of imagination to kind of see a queen here. Um, at the planetarium, um, we try and picture our queen as if she's sitting on a throne and we're getting kind of a profile view. And so we have like her head, back, upper legs, lower legs, and big long feet. And so we have our queen right there. Um, again, other people saw different things. Um, and I wish I remembered, I think it's the Persians see this as a camel. And so these are actually the humps, the two humps of a camel, which I think makes a lot more sense. Um, I know some others see a lamp here, which also makes sense. Um, one of my favorites, though, is the tinted hand, um, where it's a bloody hand. Um, I think this is an Arabic constellation. This is the tented hand uh, to the Arabics. Um, uh, and it, it's a bloody hand up in the sky um, to show what happens when you steal something. Uh, so more fun things up in our sky. All right. Uh, so that is pretty typical of the northern sky, right? We have our Greek big bear and little bear and queen or other constellations if we're talking about other cultures. Um, but let's try and find some others now moving over to the west. And again, to find our next constellation, we are going to use the Big Dipper to help us. Um, so before to find the Little Dipper and Cassiopeia, we used the two pointer stars. This time we're going to use the tail of the bear or the handle of the Big Dipper. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow the arc of the handle to this bright star here named Arcturus. And so we arc to Arcturus. Um, and this bright star 
is in the constellation, the Greek constellation of Bootes. Um, and it's this kind of kite shaped uh, right here. I think it looks more like maybe a kite or an ice cream cone, but this is supposed to be a man, the bear herder who is herding our two bears across the sky. And then right next to our bear herder sits this backward C, which is Corona Borealis or the Northern Crown. And that's a pretty easy one to find. Once you arc to Arcturus, and then right next to the ice cream cone coat or kite bear herder thing of Bootes, you see that nice backward C of the Northern Crown. All right, well, I want to now turn our attention over to the east because we are finally in the summer and can see the kind of quintessential constellations that are uh, associated with the summer. And so if we look over in the east, we can see these three bright stars that make up a triangle. And these three stars are in fact known as the summer triangle. Uh, each of these stars is associated with its own constellation. And so up at the top of the triangle here, we have Vega. Uh, then we have Altair and Deneb. And those are our three stars in our summer triangle. So Vega here is in the constellation of Lyra the Harp. Um, it's kind of like here's the harp body and then the strings kind of go this way. Although I have to say, um, we see a few other things uh, in these stars. Uh, so I know Lindsay sometimes sees a butterfly. So we kind of have the body and then the wings, which makes sense. But our favorite uh, comes to us courtesy of a guest we had a few years ago, who said that in these stars, he sees a man doing squats. Uh, and so Vega here is his head and here's his body and his squatting legs, and then the barbell that he's holding. Um, so that is my personal favorite and all I see now. Uh, but here is Lyra the harp. Uh, and I don't like how the program Stellarium draws it because um, it's not how I traditionally know of it. Like I said, um, I see it as all of these stars, but this is also showing you how the kind of pictures in the sky aren't fully set in stone. There's a different ways to kind of see them and view them. All right, um, our second constellation in the Summer Triangle uh, has the star Altair. Uh, and this is this kind of teardrop shaped constellation, which is Achilla the Eagle. And so here we have kind of the eagle's body, talons, and wings. Uh, and it's a little bit of a chunky eagle um, and we like to say that's because it is feasting on dolphins, because right next to Achilla the Eagle is Delphinus the Dolphin. Um, now, both Lyra and Achilla the Eagle are in the same Greek story, uh, and so I'm going to tell you that one. So Lyra is the name of a harp that was owned by a god, not a god, but owned by a man, man named... Um, Oh my gosh, Eli, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, yeah. Uh, we'll just say he's, he's owned by a man because I am going blank and forgetting his name. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's not Odysseus. It's... Oh, Oedipus? No. No. Anyway, it's not important. His name is not that important. Lyra the Harp was owned by a man. And this man was a very talented harp player, like known all over for his beautiful harp playing skills, even known to the gods and goddesses and played for them very often. Um, now, this man unfortunately lost his wife. Um, she passed away unexpectedly, and he was heartbroken over this. Orpheus. And Orpheus, Sorry. yes. Orpheus. Thank you. Um, 
he he was heartbroken over the loss of his wife and the ladies in the village decided that he had had enough time to mourn his wife they gave him like a week uh, and then they all came to him and was like all right so you've had enough time to mourn you're awesome we're all in love with you you need to marry one of us right now and he of course turned them all down because that was not enough time he's still very much in love with his wife not ready to move on and remarry and they get really upset with him uh, and end up killing him out of revenge. Not only did they kill him, but they cut up his body into lots of little pieces that they did then spread all over the land. And then they threw his harp into the river. And the river here is represented by the Milky Way. And so his harp is just now floating in the river and he's cut up in pieces, scattered all over the place. And the gods and goddesses learn what have happened and are devastated. So Zeus sends Achilla the eagle down to um, fetch the harp out of the river. And then he places the harp up into the sky as a kind of monument to, uh, to him and his amazing harp playing skills. And then the eagle is also put up in the sky for his help in this, uh, in this event, in this in this. Um, so yeah, those, that's the story of Lyra the Harp and Achilla the Eagle. Although I have to say, um, these two stars are involved in another culture's uh, story that I like a lot more. Uh, and this actually comes from China. Um, these two stars are two lovers known as um, the cow herder and the weaver girl. Uh, the weaver girl is the daughter of a god and goddess. And she ends up falling in love with the cow herder and her parents are like, no, this is not happening. You two are not getting together. You are you know, the child of a god and goddess. You're not marrying some cow herder. So to keep them apart, they separated them by a huge river that was impossible for either to cross. Um, and so the two lovers were kind of kept apart by this. However, nature, uh, and in particular the birds, um, felt really bad for the two lovers. And so once a year, um, they form a uh, bridge. The birds themselves form a bridge across the river so the two lovers can be together for one day out of the year. And it's this day that the Chinese celebrate as kind of like their, their Valentine's Day. Um, and that happens on the seventh day of the seventh month. Uh, so yeah, just another story with those two stars. All right, um, the last star in our summer triangle is Deneb. And it is in the Greek constellation of Cygnus the Swan. And so here we have kind of the, the tail feathers, wing, wing, and long swan neck. That is Cygnus the Swan, who is kind of flying through the Milky Way. Um, one of the cool things in Cygnus is actually the star right here at the nose of the swan is a star named Alberio. And if I zoom on in, you can see that that one star is actually two stars. Oops, let me pause time so it stops moving on us. Um, when you see the star with your eye, with your naked eye, it looks as one star, but if you look through a telescope, you can see that there's actually two stars here. Um, and this is a really cool double star system to look at. Uh, you can't see it quite well in this program, but when you look at it through a telescope, the two stars are actually very distinctly different colors, with one being this bright blue color and the other being more of a reddish orange color. So this is a kind of really fun summer object to try and look at through a telescope. And that is Alberio there at the tip of the beak of Cygnus the Swan. All right. Um, lastly, if we turn our attention over to the south, uh, we start to see a few more summer constellations that are making their way above the horizon. Uh, first, we can see the super red star here. Uh, this star is actually Antares, 
which is in Scorpio, the scorpion. Uh, and so right now, we're only seeing kind of the body of the scorpion. So here's kind of the body, and then the head, and then the claws. Um, but then the rest of his body and his tail kind of dips underneath the horizon. Um, so if I mix the ground for a second, you can see that it's got this kind of curved tail to it. Um, which, uh, if anyone has seen the movie Moana, uh, you may remember that one of the sets of stars that she used to navigate the seas was Maui's Hook. Uh, and that is actually a real constellation that the Polynesians actually use to navigate. Uh, and Maui's Hook is the tail of what the Greeks call Scorpio. Uh, and so this is Maui's Hook. And then just opposite the Milky Way, which cuts down here in the south, and is just a beautiful summertime Milky Way. Like, it is a gorgeous time to go see the Milky Way if you can find some really dark skies in the summer uh, and just look to the south. Um, but opposite of our scorpion, we see what really looks like a teapot, right? We have the kind of body of the teapot, handle, top, and spout. Uh, so this teapot is actually the constellation Sagittarius that is supposed to be a centaur. Um, I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to get a centaur from a teapot, but there you go. That's, that is one of the other summer constellations that we can see up uh, this month. And as we get uh, later into the month, uh, these will all still be there. They'll just be seen a little bit earlier in the night. So right now, at the beginning of the month, we're having to wait till like 1030 for it to get dark. Uh, but since we are past the summer solstice, days are starting to get a little bit shorter. Um, we'll, the nighttime sunset will be earlier and earlier each day throughout the summer, and we'll be able to see these uh, earlier and earlier in the evening instead of having to wait super late for it to get dark. All right, well, I think we will wrap it up there. Those are some of the great constellations that we can find up in our summer sky. Uh, a few things uh, to try and see if you're out in some dark skies, uh, even a couple of things to maybe look at through a telescope, like our double star system here. Or honestly, just point your telescope anywhere in the south in the Milky Way, and you're gonna see some great stuff. Um, there are lots of nebulae, gas clouds, and star clusters, and lots of just great things to see. Since what we're doing here, the reason this looks so kind of busy and, and thick and vibrant is because this is actually the direction looking right into the center of the Milky Way. And we're kind of like halfway to the edge. So we're really looking in in this direction, looking into kind of the dense heart of the galaxy. And that's why there's just so much stuff to see here and why the summertime Milky Way is such a beautiful sight to see. All right. I think we will wrap it up there. Um, Eli, did we get any questions? Uh, nope, we just got one comment helping us out with uh, Orpheus. Ah, yes, thank you. Uh, you can tell it has been a year since I have told that story. Uh, I am a little out of practice still with the summer sky. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So if you have, if there are any questions, now's a great time to leave them down in the comments. Um, and I will give you a little bit of a sneak of what's coming up over the next week. Um, so on Wednesday, We've got a super fun show for you called Doomsday Earth, which is all about the myriad of ways that the Earth could be destroyed. And then next Saturday is when we have rescheduled Exploring Venus, uh, since unfortunately a week ago we had to uh, the last minute cancel the show. So we are going to do it for you next week, next Saturday. And so we'll take a close up look at the planet Venus. Um, yeah, so that's what you can expect over the next week. We do have a really fun, awesome announcement coming out on Monday, and I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys, uh, we 
are opening for private shows. Um, so starting Monday, so we're not actually now open yet, um, but starting Monday, uh, we will be open for uh, scheduling uh, private shows so that you can bring your family and friends or camp group or whatever and uh, come in to the planetarium. So all of the details will go out on Monday um, with uh, policies that we have in place, pricing, all of that. But we are so excited to actually be able to bring people back into the planetarium. Um, in the meantime, though, we will continue to stream, uh, and we will do so uh, until, really until our public shows get up and going again, which we don't have a set date for yet, because uh, we have some improvements um, that we're making in the planetarium, some upgrades that we're doing, and we want to make sure that all of that is done before we reopen. Um, but of course, we will let you guys know once that's coming up. All right. Um... We get anything? Uh, no, nothing more. All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap it up there. Um, thank you everyone so much for joining us. Uh, have a wonderful 4th of July tomorrow. Uh, if you're going to be outside, please remember to drink lots of water because it is definitely going to be a hot one. Um, but have fun, be safe, and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. <laughs>